I was born in Belgrade. From very childhood, I was exposed to the art scene. Six, seven, I think I started drawing, and my first exhibition was with the age 12. Now I'm 63 years old. The point of your life right now that you can really look back and have the satisfaction of the achievement, but also see how much time is left and what is the most important things I should still do. This is a culture center, student culture center. It was the most important, you know, building in my life here in Belgrade. There where I start really actually finishing being conventional painter and become conceptual artist. Mm -hmm. I come here and felt that I'm away from my restrictions of my family. I'm away from my mother, from the, you know, from nice teachers, from just all the world. And uh, I could do these experiments. Everything was possible. And it was the only place in, in, in this country. It was the moment in my life when I had to break the structure of the traditional art and go to territory I don't know. The really very important piece here was written five. This was the first time that I really used this five-point star before I cut it on my stomach, before I used it on other occasions. The five-point star was everywhere. It was in every school book, it was in every public space, uh, people houses, in uh, any kind of documents you will have, it was five-point star. But at the same time, for me, stands for restrictions, so many things. I felt like doing like a new ritual, you know, burning that five-point star. It's here. Right here. I built this huge uh, communist star with a hundred liter of gasoline soaked in sawdust. And when it actually started burning, it was like a huge flame. I remember that all the parts of the tree burned <laughs> right away. And then going around the star and uh, cutting first the nails, and every nail I would put in one corner, then cutting two snails, cutting all my hair and burning the star. coming inside the star and creating this position of the body, you know, stretching it. And each point will be like, you know, five point star is like Leonardo. And then to lie there and just uh, till the old star burn and it's just a trace of my body who I will stay there. I wanted to lie there till the entire fire was gone, but the fire will take all the oxygen. And I really lost consciousness in the middle of the star. I really understood the, the limit of the body. And this was really breaking point for me, how I can actually use my body even behind the consciousness. It was the only actually example that I didn't uh, finish performance. When I really start working with performances, nobody call art and everybody ridicule. And my mother was thinking I'm crazy that I should go to hospital or there's something wrong with me. She was always thinking that I'm doing something wrong here and she absolutely hated it. So this uh, total control of my mother, total obsessional discipline which I had opposed of me, it, I had to have my own space. I have to kind of let it free. So the Student Culture Center was that kind of island of freedom that I would escape. I was so incredibly unhappy as a child. It was a hell, constant hell. My mother was obsessed by cleaning. Everything had to be clean. When I was a kid, um, everybody who wanted to visit me had to have the mask and to have to wash the hands. And I was crazy about washing hands hundreds of times of the day. Every time she would tell to me and my brother, bathroom is free. It means that we have to go and wash the hands. And uh, that even if I slept, that the bed had to be straight. My father come home very late, my mother, they always fight. We never sit together as a family, we never talk together, we never had any kind of Christmas, New Year together. It was always very unpleasant and very tense situation. I miss so much to be loved and so much to have emotions expressed in my childhood. I asked my mother why she never kissed me. And she was so surprised and totally natural with a big smile on her face. She just said, of course not to spoil you. My mother never kissed me either. I was like, I could not believe the answer. She never even considered it was like something wrong with that. She never wanted to have a pain shown in any way. When she was delivering me, she was on the party meeting and her, the, the water broke and she ignored this. And she finished the party meeting and then she went to hospital. I was just insane, I mean, that kind of 
you know, heroism constantly in life and, and create this very unemotional relation to the children, which both of us suffer for so long. And, and then on, on if she died, you find that she was not like this at all. Marina. Film se snima, moramo sve tako izgleda, sve mnogo lepo izgleda. We are in the apartment of my youngest sister, my mother, Ksenija Martinović. She's the only one actually alive from the whole family. Vrlo žustra, precizna, tačna. Podnosila je i teškoću. I bol. I bol. To si ti nasledila. Pet razreda gimnazije završila u Sremčnih Karlovcima. Tada su u joj umro otac i stričevi, vratila se u Pljevlja i nastavila je gimnaziju. I u sedmom razredu gimnazije bio je štrajk djaka. Tada je bio već pokret komunistički. I ona je štrajkova. A ona se otišla je u partizane, iako je Vernik bila, iako je imala strica, tako, otišla je da brani otačbinu. Nije se borila protiv Boga, nego protiv fašizma. Svih sedam neprijateljskih ofenziva je dva puta je ranjala. Nije imala ni tri godine. Kad je dve i po tri godine, kad je baba morala da ide, majka je radila, otac radio, a baba je morala da ode da kupi, da nabavi hranu. Te su teške godine bile, posle rata. Pa nije imala kome da je ostavi. Ostavljala je samo. I ovako je kaže, Marina, nemoj da šetaš po kući, nemoj ništa da radiš. Evo ti ostavila sam ti vodu i nemoj da se mičeš. Baba ostane u redovima, čeka po dva do tri sata, vrati se, zatekne Marinu na isto mesto gde je ostavila. Čak ni vodu nije pila. I to je bilo izuzetno... Svi su se čudili jer dete od dve, tri godine neće da miruje. A ona je tako mirovala da je mogla po dva do tri sata da se ne pomakne. Moja majka je ostala ludovica od 32 godine sa četvoro dece, kad su njih trojica umrli. Ona nas nije smazila, nego nas je vaspitavala. I moja majka, možeš reći, kad smo je pitali kasnije, kad smo odrasli, kako nas mama nikad nisi ljubila i mazila? Jesam kad zaspite, a dok me vidite da vas ne razmazi, ostala je sama. Čitav život je podredila vama i žrtvovala do kraja. Marina, jednu stvar shvati. Tvoja majka je rano ostala bez oca. Imala je problema. A taka je bila, ona je emocije imala velike. Svaki tvoj let aviona ona je preživljavala. Vidiš koju je bolest dobila, od silnih emocija. A ti tvoje emocije ispoljavaš, a ona ih drži unutra što nije dobro. Tu ih stisne, pa je tu stisne. Da, ako bi majka bila u ovom momentu ovde, šta bi ona rekla na sve ovo što se desilo sa mnom do sada? Bila bi presjetna. Bila bi preza. Nema naše dalje. Ali život teče dalje. I treba da ideš dalje. I never understood her before. She was completely the most emotional person I ever knew in my life. But she just could not show it. And I would be completely different to her if I knew that. When she died, I found that she had every single exhibition of me, every little piece of paper, in print even my name. She would cut it and put the dates and stuff. Completely proud, but never showing it. If I just knew two pages of this diary during her lifetime, my relation to her would be very different. Dear mother, I didn't understand you as a child. I didn't understand you as a student. I didn't understand you as an adult. Until now, in my 60s years of life, you start shining in the full light, like a sun that suddenly appears behind the gray clouds after rain. <laughs>